Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Rodriguez, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Mike Saltzman. I'm the executive director of the Employment Policies Institute. We're a think tank that works on this issue nationally. I'm here today in protest of a process and a so-called compromise that has omitted the voices of Chicago servers and bartenders most directly impacted by this issue. I presented to and met with thousands of tip workers around the country, including several packed rooms here in Chicago. And the perspective of these workers is clear. They support and benefit from the current tip wage system, and they don't want it to change. A survey by the company Upserve found that 97% of tip workers prefer the tipping status quo over a so-called one fair wage alternative, where your base wage might be higher, but your tips most certainly are not. This is not some big business conspiracy. Uh, in fact, tip workers in progressive locales have been leaders in defending the tip wage system. In Portland, Maine this past fall, a tip wage elimination ballot measure supported by the same group now active of Chicago was defeated by nearly 20 points. Even Hillary Clinton cut a video in support of that measure, but she couldn't overcome the unified voice of servers and bartenders who were saying, don't mess with my income. Similarly, in the state of Maryland this year, one fair wage or one flat wage, as many workers took to calling them, failed to convince a Democratic governor and legislature that the state should eliminate the tip wage. Servers and bartenders waited for hours to testify against them. Here in Chicago, though, unfortunately, these discussions have largely occurred behind closed doors. Tip workers have not been consulted in a meaningful way or even informed outside of what they've read in the press. And press statements from some elected officials suggest that the restaurant industry had better keep its mouth shut, lest something even more harmful be passed. I can tell you that everyone in the city I've met with has been angry and they've been confused. They want to know why they were not consulted. They want to know who's behind a plan to fix a system that's not broken. And yet here we are. If you pass this, there will be consequences for the city. Yes, jobs will be lost. Studies from Harvard, University of California, Congressional Budget Office make that very clear. But most concerningly, tip workers will earn less. And that's not according to me but to both Cornell and the Census Bureau that have studied this issue extensively in other places that have done it and found that tips go down after the tip wage rises. Eliminating the tip wage is a poorly conceived idea that has been repeatedly rejected in red and blue locales by the very workers who are supposed to benefit from it. Uh, with that, I'd encourage you to treat the idea, this idea the same way a restaurant guest may treat a half-baked dish uh, and send it back to the kitchen. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Destiny Fox. Um, I work at Gina Giorgetti's restaurant here, downtown Chicago. Um, I want to start off with, I didn't know anything until almost two, three weeks ago uh, about any of what was being discussed. Um, I, me and other coworkers, we weren't aware of what was being discussed. And us as the workers, we should have a right to speak to say what we believe is right for us as workers. Um, I don't agree with uh, making a one flat wage um, and taking away my tips. I live downtown thanks to the tips that I make. I work hard for my tips. Um, we create experiences for people. I'm not, um, I'm not at a cashier register um, getting minimum wage. I don't work for minimum wage. I work for the tips that I that I believe I deserve, and the, my coworkers um, deserve and they earn. Um, I mean, I I think this would highly affect my livelihood, the way I pay my rent, the savings that I put away to start a family, to go back to school. I'm not going to be able to do those things if you take away tips, which is how I round up as well my money. It's a second job as well as it's been my job for years on and off. Um, but I, I also teach. I have a degree. I'm working on my second degree. I speak multiple languages. I'm here from Italy. My mom raised me as a server, an immigrant. And 
I mean, I don't understand where we're going to fix and put our hands somewhere where the city has a lot of other things that they need to worry about, I believe. Um, then to put your hands somewhere where it doesn't need fixing. This is a system that's worked for us for years. Like I said, my mom raised me over 20 years ago. I'm 34 now, so 30 years. And she had probably $4 as well as her, as her, her pay plus tips. And she raised me. She paid my schooling. She provided me everything I needed. And so I, I don't understand where we're going to put our hands and just give us minimum wage or $18 or whatever it is. Um, I don't make that in an hour. I make, I make way over that in an hour. So um, another thing that I also is, is you're driving people out of the city. I mean, um, our server is gonna end up going to the suburbs. So the restaurants that are opening. Thank, what, thank what you, Destiny Fox. Have? Thank you so much.